Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries, distinguished speakers, honorable participants, and the loving audience, all beautiful people present today here from all around the globe. Hi, please now that on coach IAU, Europe co-founder, IAU, President of Research Center, Board Member, Country Director, Croatia, welcome you all to the day two of International Conference 2023 on the theme Education for Sustainable Development, jointly organized by International Internship University, Global Community for Education 2030, and IIU Research Center. Yesterday, we already think, we already act, we already make big changes on the Education for Sustainable development. We know the importance of the education for sustainable development. It is not only when we are talking about education, the SDG4. It means a lot. It means new values, new skills, new knowledge. It means all 17 SDGs because the United Nations 2030 agenda is envisaging a world of universal respect also for human rights, human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality, and non-discrimination. Today, again, our great organizers, yesterday I present all Global Community for Education 2030 is formed to promote and implement United Nations 2030 Agenda for making education accessible to all through partnerships, policy guidance, capacity development, monitoring, and advocacy. The 2030 Agenda for SD is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. We are comprising 17 sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goal four is the education goal to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So Professor Pradipta Manda is the founder. Also, he's a founder of Global Educators Forum and Global Metaverse Community. Mr. Piyush Pandit is the founder of International Internship University, the president of Global Educators Forum. Professor Nada Radkovic is the CEO and Dr. Snikta Kadam is the COO of International Internship University and the chairperson of Global Community for Education 2030. IAU, IAU is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. IAU is a trusted name and it is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs, providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses, internships to their e learners across the globe, and helping the 1,000 plus global educators. Uh, IIU is under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist the last two decades providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. IAU Research Center, a unique hub establishment by IAU, is giving the opportunity to all the researchers, authors, educators, students, scholars across the globe to enhance their research opportunities, academic excellence, real world problem solving, knowledge creation, and dissemination. Me, Professor Nada Radko, is the president of IAU Research Center, thinks if you have ever thought about how would be the world without education, research, science, innovation, technology, or any development, then IAU Research Center, IAU Global Community, all are for you and right place for you. Be free and join us. So let's today continue acquiring our knowledge of future education. We can change the world with education. IAU is an education platform at IAU. On the first place is education and all what we are doing, we are doing for the education. And yes, 
Global Community for Education 2030 is a place where all academicians, professors, teachers are able to share the knowledge and experience around the world. So education, we need to think on that. It is an integral part of achieving sustainable development. And it is through the, and we know that it is adopted through 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it is the focus for 2030. And before we start, I want to announce again, like yesterday, please, I are you, yes organizing the Climate Science Olympiad 2023, you can become a part of this global movement and to address the climate change. And it will all happen at E Village Kunda. E Village Kunda is something that, that the founder of IAU dreams, and that dreams comes a reality. So as a participant, you have opportunity to work Forward, finding innovative solutions, you can present issues of climate change. Also, there will be contribution of life on a land, a big place, a big place in the rural part. You need to see that. So don't miss that incredible opportunity to make a global impact, to gain valuable experience and be a part of solution to climate change. So, Today, we are continuing to inspire with new ideas, new innovative ideas, the hope on the education for sustainable development. Yesterday, our eminent speakers were amazing. And yesterday, we have an amazing master of the ceremony, great Miss Herdiana. And today, here with me and all of us, we have a new master of a ceremony, not a new, but today with us is an amazing, awesome Professor Karudin Sudkarmin, FCILT, an adjunct professor from Asia Metropolitan University and so many universities. We are really honored to have a great Professor Karudin with us. He is amazing. And I can say that we are really lucky to have this person with us. Professor Karudin, I am giving you the leadership today of this IAU platform. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Professor Nada, my good friend, Professor Nada Radkovic from Croatia. I want to thank uh, Professor Pradipta and IAU for inviting me to uh, today to we've heard uh, an amazing uh, moderator yesterday on the international conference uh, Ms. Herdiana from Indonesia today I just like to wish you a very good evening because right now in Kuala Lumpur Malaysia it is 6 40 p.m in the evening on a Sunday evening uh, fairly good weather okay and uh, thank you again, uh, Prof. Nada, for the kind introduction and setting the scene. We've heard a lot of interesting uh, views on uh, education for sustainable development. So I will not uh, spend or waste more time, you know, repeating what she said. Just that before I start, before I call our first speaker, our first uh, uh, speaker for the day, I just want to quickly, yeah, as you know, when I Google, when I type education and sustainable um, uh, development, hundred sorry, 744 million results came out in 0 0.41 seconds. So this is what came out. I'll read the first one. Yes. Education, for, <laughs> education for sustainable development or ESD promotes the development of knowledge, skills, understanding, values, and actions required to create a sustainable world, which ensures environmental protection and conservation, promotes social equity and encourages economic sustainability. So there's been so many ways to skin, so they say there's, there are nine ways to skin a cat. There's so many ways for us to, you know, uh, synthesize, to analyze. So today we will listen to all the esteemed, the respected, speakers again from all over the world to speak on uh, this topic of education and sustainable development. Now, without further ado, may I now call upon our first speaker for today, 
Mrs. Kaudri uh, Joshna Das. Are you there, uh, 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 Ms. Das? Oh yeah, she's smiling there, All right. Now, yeah. she's a women social entrepreneur, frontline fashion designer, promoter, eco-friendly and sustainable fashion founder and designer of uh, Bivar Bari Fashions Private Limited from India. So again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's join me in welcoming uh, uh, Ms. Kaudri. So the floor is all yours now uh, to talk to us about from your perspective of education and sustainable development. All yours, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> I must thank uh, to everyone here for having me uh, in this amazing forum. So I'm so excited uh, to speak on this platform. Uh, sustainability is my favorite subject. I'm working on it from last 22 years. So I think I can throw some lights in this uh, topic. So <clears throat> I'm a fashion designer by profession from last 22 years. My company, Bibhavari Fashion Private Limited, promotes eco-friendly and sustainable fashion. I work with weavers, artisans, and women in grassroots level, and we provide them a sustainable living by working with them. Education for sustainability is regarded as a normative concept. This means it is based on what people value or find desirable. The quest for sustainability involves connecting what is known through scientific study to applications in pursuit of what people want for the future. Education for sustainable development allows every human being to acquire the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values necessary to shape a sustainable future. Education for sustainable development means including key sustainable development issues into teaching, and learning, for example, climate change, disaster risk reduction, biodiversity, poverty reduction, and sustainable consumption. It empowers learners of all ages to make informed decisions and take individual and collective action to change society and care for the planet. ESD is a lifelong learning process and an integral part of quality education. It enhances the cognitive, socio-emotional, and behavioral dimensions of learning and encompasses learning content and outcomes, pedagogy, and learning environment itself. There are 17 SDGs. However, each one is connected to another. These goals should must be a part of the education system. These should be a part of curriculum from primary classes for the students of fashion design, textile design, or any other related studies that are connected to the textile industries. So to have some course highlights on sustainable fashion. Then uh, here comes the question, what is sustainable fashion? I'll just like to uh, run the PPT. Uh, please unmute yourself because I muted you, please. Ms. Kaudri, we can't hear you. Can you unmute? unmute? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can hear you. All right. Okay, okay. So these are some pictures of me working with the women's artisans and weavers. Okay, 
ಎಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಇದು ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸೆಬ್ರಲ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಟು ಡೇಟ್ ಸಸ್ಟೈನಬಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಮೇಕರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ಸ್ aiming to achieve a carbon neutral fashion industry built on equality social justice animal welfare and ecological integrity why is sustainable fashion important one of the most asked question is does the world need sustainable fashion it does of course it does without a doubt and here are the top five reasons Sustainable fashion creates less waste. Globally on garbage truck, one garbage truck of textile waste is dumped on landfill and burned every second. This enormous waste is created by fast fashion companies that launch weekly fashion trends and fulfill them with poor quality, low priced products. In comparison, sustainable brands focus on quality clothing products from long lasting materials moreover sustainable fashion brands rarely follow fast fashion trends secondly sustainable fashion ensures fair wages and proper working condition cheap fast fashion garments are made possible by harsh working conditions for garment workers frequently child labor accusations have also been brought against fast fashion brands on the other hand sustainable clothing brands prioritize fair wages and safe working conditions for all employees thirdly sustainable fashion reduces co2 and other greenhouse gases emission fast fashion has a huge carbon footprint from material creation manufacturing transportation and even textile waste decomposing in landfills For example most fast fashion clothes are made from petroleum based materials think acrylic nylon polyester production and disposal require a significant amount of energy on the other hand sustainable fashion utilizes biodegradable materials from natural or recycled fabrics fourthly sustainable fashion saves water The fashion industry is one of the largest water consumers in the world right now. The water is consumed not only for washing garments but also during manufacturing, in dyeing and finishing processes. Just to put that into perspective, it takes about 2720 liters of water to make one cotton shirt. and a hooping 7000 liters to make one pair of jeans on top of consuming water clothing production impacts the environment by polluting fresh water with toxic chemicals that find their way into waterways moreover sustainable fashion prioritizes organic textiles made from linen hemp and organic cotton which require little to no water during production fifthly <clears throat> sustainable fashion saves animal lives animals are vital to our ecosystem each playing a key role in ensuring earth earth is habitable as such any threat to wildlife and other animal safety should concern us all leather bags shoes fur coats and other goods made from animal leather feathers and wool affect animal populations and thus the survival of humanity on this planet in comparison clothing brands that are cruelty free and vegan protect animals <coughs> so this is a uh, cycle of uh, sustainable fashion how can uh, we practice sustainability we can practice sustain- sustainability through ethical and fair trade fashion 
eco friendly or green fashion vegan or cruelty fashion slow fashion as in slow manufacturing upcycle fashion thrifting swapping sharing and renting fashion circular fashion is reuse of discarded and recycled materials Con conscious fashion <coughs> is to is, is a role to be a role to be played by the consumers <coughs> so uh, in general how can people get involved in this sustainable practice every single person can act uh, can take action in many different ways every day to protect the planet unesco also launched trash hack in response to the 2 billion tons of waste that the world produces every year waste which clog up the oceans fill the streets and litter huge areas trash hacks are small changes everyone can make every day to reduce waste in their lives their communities and the world as a promoter of eco friendly and sustainable fashion i would like to throw some lights on how can we practice sustainability in our daily life we can try to reuse recycle most of our garments <clears throat> even we can uh, reuse our household household goods also so these are some pictures of uh, my designer garments where which are completely eco friendly <clears throat> and these are some upcycle handloom products we usually made these products from leftover scrap fabrics <clears throat> these are some unused paper bags uh, paper cartons almond boxes we have used for recycling and uh, this is a uh, jewelry uh, we have made from the scrap fabric actually we are making more than 25 uh, uh, 25 of products <clears throat> in the recycle process and we are also imparting uh, this uh, in small seminars to the school children to the college students also so i will request everyone here Uh, to practice sustainability in our daily life also not only education will not do we have to practice it every day in our practical life uh, i think i am done uh, thank you so much for giving me uh, this opportunity to speak on this uh, amazing forum thank you thank again. you thank you thank you ms kadri for sharing uh, your application of uh, education and I, if i may quickly uh, summarize she was uh, she started off by saying that this this education in social um, what do you call um, sustainability is the use of the i like that the normative concept you know pedagogy and then using attitudes and values and connecting thanks again uh, thanks again ms kadri well done uh, now from india let's move to If I may remind the rest of the speakers, yeah, uh, you are given ten minutes, so please uh, stick. Uh, uh, what do you call around that time frame? Uh, we will now move to Italy. Let's listen Hello. to my good friend, Dr. Melissa. Are you there, Melissa? Yes, I am. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Melissa Esposito. She is yes. an educator and an international speaker from Italy. All yours, uh, Dr. Melissa. Okay. Uh, can I share my screen? Please. Yes. Okay, perfect. Begin from now. Okay, education for sustainable development. I'm Melissa Sposto. I'm a, a teacher in high school, and I am from Italy. I begin. We live in a busy age. The world is changing rapidly with the far-reaching consequences for humans and the environment. The basic idea of sustainable development anchored at national and international level. is linked to this dynamic the goal of sustainable development is to enable all human beings and to have a good quality of life within the ecological limits of our planet today and the future several models attempt to illustrate sustainable development 
To, the, to this end, they set various pri priorities and each time offer an interesting basis for discussion. Here, I want to uh, 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 let you see uh, two examples of this. Without education, uh, there is no sustainable uh, development. Education plays a, a central role in sustainable development. To promote, to promote the SDG, uh, the following objectives have therefore been set in the United Nations Agenda 2030. Goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And uh, the target of 4.7 uh, says, ensure by 2030 that all learners acquire the, the knowledge and skills necessary to promote sustainable development, including throughout education for sustainable development and lifestyles and for global citizenship. Um, what is education for sustainable development? Education for sustainable development is both a prerequisite of a, and a driving force for sustainable development. Education for sustainable development is an educational concept applicable to all subjects and to the schools as a whole. Uh, it um, supports uh, global learning processes uh, by addressing questions of vital importance for the future. Uh, throughout reflective and participatory uh, methods, education for sustainable development promotes the development of key competencies for sustainable development. Education uh, combines different elements uh, uh, such as uh, teams, skills, uh, uh, learning objectives, uh, principles, methods, and learning materials that tell of young human beings to participate in the construction of the present and the future with a critical spirit and creativity for development sustainable. Um, anchoring in the uh, curriculum. In Italy, sustainable development is anchored in the compulsory school curriculum. In fact, in the Italian study plan, education for sustainable development is present in an important way. It is mainly found in transversal skills uh, throughout the schooling and the general education context is developed in individual disciplines. In the disciplinary plans, education for sustainable development is present with various references, especially in geography, history, and civics, uh, natural science, mathematics also, and in the section concerning the study on the environment. How to put education for sustainable development into practice? The instructional components for making education uh, for sustainable development are the same as employed in any other lesson design. For practical implementation, it is useful to consider elements such as teams, skills, and principles methods. For whole school development, the same elements uh, can be related to core processes. Uh, the art lies in combining these elements harmoniously. At the school, we are dealing with the theme of the apple, for example, says a, st a student returning from vacation. Teams must be tangible and easy to remember. Uh, education for sustainable development also offers a great variety of interdisciplinary thematic entries in line with the, what the study plan proposes. The income is related to already well-known educational concepts, such as environmental education or health promotion. Uh, uh, finding the good teams of education for sustainable development. Thematic entries offer various possibilities to approach education for sustainable development. Many classic teams proposed in the lessons can easily uh, be developed with an orientation towards education for sustainable development. To this end, it may be helpful to reflect on the following questions based on the theme. How can I show relationships uh, with, between local and global circumstances and processes? How can I thematize the effects of the past and the present on future generations and the of pupils to develop desirable visions for the future? How can I illustrate the ecological, economic, and social dimension in the day interactions? Two thematic as examples. The following two examples emblematically show the possibilities of coping education for sustainable development, uh, starting from a team and the links that can be developed. In addiction, possible methods or projects are proposed. The first example focuses on the lesson while the second on the school as a rule. Team, nutrition. To support inquiry and discovery oriented learning, it makes sense to replace teams with the general open-ended questions. 
For example, are all apples the, the same instead of dealing with the topic apple? Uh, these questions stimulate reflection and critical analysis and dialogue for the integration of different perspectives. Examples of general questions on the topic uh, of nutrition. How do we want to feed ourselves in the future? Uh, are all apps or apples the same? Uh, what's behind my hamburger? Uh, how much food is enough? The topic of nutrition also serves an, as an ideal starting point for teaching sustainable development throughout the school. Playtime snacks and lunchtime meals offers, offer real, real learning situation in this area. And second theme is the diversity. Even up the team of diversity lends itself a perspective uh, to setting up a specific lessons on education for sustainable development. Examples of a general questions on the topic of diversity. How can culture origin enrich school life? Uh, which training venues do we actively include? Uh, on the basis of which criteria do we purchase our school supplies? What can we learn from schools located in elsewhere? Uh, what contribution can art and culture provide? Skills. Education for sustainable development combines teams with the pedagogical skills and principles in such a way that students um, um, or the world's institution learn to participate actively and independently uh, in organizing a livable present and future. The main competences or education for sustainable development include use tools interactively, uh, disciplinary and methodological skills, uh, build interdisciplinary knowledge and multiple perspectives, think systematically, think and act in an anticipatory way, think critically uh, and constructively, interact in different groups, social skills, change perspective, tackling sustainable development issues together, actively participate in social processes, acting autonomously, personal skills, feel part of the world, reflect on your own values and those of other people, take responsibility and use the various margins of manuera that exists. An example for the competence thinking systematically, Students in a second grade class have trained themselves to think systematically. Uh, when preparing the lesson, the teacher de decides to apply this competence to the topic of nutrition, focusing on the food that is part of the student's daily life. For example, the apple, the hamburger. Uh, the teacher illustrates the, all the steps and people involved from production to consumption, as well as the relationship between these elements. Uh, then graph the correlations using, uh, for example, with arrows and lines. Thus, the global interrelationship uh, with our food can be quickly discovered. To carry out this exercise, the, the rule play proposed by the activity a ball in the plate or the mystery method are suitable. In order to allow um, for a whole school approach, it is important that the whole teaching team is confronted with the competence of education for sustainable development, such as a system thinking. Uh, the teaching staff can thus develop a common understanding and a coordinated structure of competencies for all cycles. Uh, education for sustainable development is a, as a whole school approach Education for sustainable development uh, as a full cool approach serves to combine learning about sustainable development and living a sustainable development. This can mean develop common visions, integrate uh, this um, uh, development as a, into lessons in terms of content and method, empower the, and support the teaching staff in this regard, develop decision making and negotiation processes in a participatory way. Assume leadership as and create structures, for example, uh, working groups, set up the school building and the area around the school according to the principles of sustainability. Take care of relationship uh, with the surrounding environment and the various actors, engage in and with the municipality in favor of sustainable development, etc. In this way, the school is transformed into a real laboratory for setting up and implementing with the sustainable development. 
the steps to take up to achieve the goal. It is not about being a perfect school education for continuous and common uh, learning process. Uh, in this context, the pedagogical principles of education uh, for sustainable development also serve as guidelines. The processes could begin, begin and continue by taking the following step. First, uh, let's start the development of the common vision. Which school education for sustainable development do we want to be? Uh, draft a mission statement and reaffirm everyone's commitment to the project. Second step, where are we? Where do we want to go? Uh, establish your position and define your development needs. Third step, we prioritize and plan, prepare a plan and set up the work organization. Fourth step, we put it into practice, put the measures into practice, the constantly document what has been done. Fifth step, evaluate and celebrate, review your work in reflect and reflect on what you have done. They do the next steps to take, celebrate and value. And, and finally, uh, we communicate in form on the result obtained and on the knowledge uh, acquired both internally and externally of the school. Give yourself time. Evolving a school takes time and really happens in a linear fashion. Uh, there are no one size fits or shifts. Each school has to find its own way. Uh, to this end, it is worth reflecting on the following points. The change requires awareness tra training, formation of the will with the visions, goals, etc. Emotional re uh, readiness and to handle changes, uh, knowledge and skills, information and communication, putting to practice, planning and management. Uh, opportunity to start experiences of education for sustainable de development. Uh, this is not something supplementary, uh, but an integral part of well designing the lessons. To this end, a regular teaching on the different disciplines and the interdisciplinary um, teaching continue to act as in the main vector. However, teaching life and school life offer innumerable uh, other possibilities for gaining experience in education for sustainable development. Education for sustainable development is not something supplementary, uh, but an integral part of well-designed lessons. To this end, regular teaching on the different disciplines in the different and teaching continue to act uh, and uh, uh, take to ends. Uh, this, uh, my speech is ended and I want to thank you all uh, for listening to me and I thank you all for giving me this thank great you. opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Melissa. I was worried you have crossed your 10 minutes, but I, you know, I find that it's uh, very interesting. Uh, thank but you. I, I'm sure your 10 minutes is not enough. But if I may quickly summarize, uh, I like the part that you started off by saying that this, um, what you call, uh, sustainability or education, uh, and when you want to do and you educate sustainability, it's already um, uh, anchored, which means it's already embedded in your school curriculum education system in Italy. That's wonderful. I'm sure a lot of other countries are also doing that. And the other one is you explain the how bit, which you, which is basically about you know the interdisciplinary and you know and then and thematic. Those are the two things that I picked up. Uh, what you're trying to share with us. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Melissa. Uh, from Italy now, let's move to a nearby city, nearby country. We'll move to Poland. Uh, uh, I now like to call upon Mr. Marius Wojcinski, teacher, non-public -pub primary school in Inauroklo, in Poland. International speaker, he's an international speaker. He's an ambassador of many global platforms. Let's listen to uh, our friend from Poland, Mr. Marius. All yours, uh, Mr. Marius. Uh, please, yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> yes, hello. I try to be shortly. I have a short presentation, short information. Uh, first of all, nice to see you. I come from Poland. I work with uh, many kids, many young people with many disabilities. And it's very important to us and it's very important to me. Um, the SDG goals are important to us, very important to us, uh, but we are not able to implement it, uh, them all at the same, the same time. Uh, that's why we focus on the choose ones. Uh, there's a lot of talk about ecology, uh, but it's also worth talking about uh, education and um, because the good education means changing the environment. 
and I have short presentation, just give me a minute. Okay. Yes, uh, how I saw, how you tell about me, I am go, I come from Poland, I'm science teacher, not English teacher, because my English is not very good, but I work in a non-public primary school in, in Wrocław. It's a small city in Poland, uh, and my school with this integration in classes. I'm coordinator of schools projects, and I'm ICT supporter. And uh, this is my kids, this is my students, not all, just some of them. And we are not in public school in Poland, and we have nursery, kindergarten, high school, and so long, so long. But in my school, currently it's now uh, 290 students attending pri our primary school, of which our 75% uh, have various disabilities. We have many um, teachers, how you see, and many therapists. And what is important to us? Uh, we talk about ecology, we talk about environment, we talk about how to help them, but we need to talk about education. And how you see, our students have many different problems. And they usually have autism, and they usually have autism syndrome. Uh, this is a short photos for us, for our school. But what is important to us? Uh, our students and me, as uh, one of the 13 schools in Poland participate in the Polish Wikidata project, Wiki School. Uh, we talk about ecology, we talk about uh, goals as the girls, we talk about education. We create, create our own Wikipedia entries. We meet with representatives of Wiki and use this for them during a lesson. Our students with special needs use various application of databases. Uh, we don't use a paper. We don't write on the paper. You, we use application. When we have a lesson, we don't use a book. We don't use any, any paper. We use electronic, most, uh, electronic elements. Uh, we are not able to work on all goals. There's a lot of talk about inclusive education. For us, it is a purity. We also work with students on the water project. This is our project. This is our, my students' project. They think about it. They make it. They change it. They start it. What they use, what they do. Uh, they make a project about water. How to help Earth, how to help all people on the world use water. They want to change it. They make many interesting projects. They make our Vuvu page, an uh, internet page. They make uh, many posters. Uh, they make uh, many video films. And so long, so long. They talk about ecology. They talk about education. They talk about water. And I saw, I hope so, it's so many, many interesting and many important to us. Summarizing, uh, how you see in my most school, the glasses contain of countries, we have students with special needs and our schools. But if you want to talk about the if you, if you want to talk about water, you, if you want to talk about project, how to make a project, how to um, change the world, how to change education, and how to help us, how to help us, our students, not just my students, but also your students too just call to me, just write to me, and it's everything what you can do. And how I say this, it's shortly, and just want to say, nice to see you, nice to talk about that, but I think we don't have any time. But I hope so, that you, uh, you all students, your you teachers, make it work, uh, make to change, made to change environment and we can do that with other together thank you very much thank you thank you mr wasinski marius yeah for sharing uh, with us what you do in poland you know especially i like the part that you teach your uh, what do you call a special education students how to yeah. use the wiki 
Uh, I think that uh, would, would inspire a lot of other educators elsewhere in the world to also use it. Thank you very much again, uh, Maurice, mm -hmm. for spending time with us today. Um, <coughs> let's now move on from Poland. Let's move on to another country. Oh, that's nearby, not nearby us. We will now move to Vietnam. Uh, we are now having Miss Lee T. My aunt. She's a teacher of Lao Chai High School, Vietnam. She's an international speaker. <laughs> well, good to see you again, uh, Miss Lee T. My aunt. Uh, looks like in the last few weeks we have been seeing a lot of each other on uh, on those webinar. So please, uh, all yours now. I don't. Uh, yeah, uh, please uh, keep to the ten minutes. Please share with us uh, what you do in Vietnam. Yeah, all yours. Thank you very much for beautiful introduction about me. <laughs> Greeting from Vietnam. I am uh, Lady Mai Anh, a teacher of English at a high school in Vietnam, a beautiful country. So welcome all of you to come here and to enjoy uh, the weather, the landscape, and the, uh, to meet people, especially uh, to, um, um, to take part in some school activity in, at, at my school. Welcome. Yeah, I'm very impressed by this topic. Yeah, this topic is very interesting. Um, yeah, education um, for sustainable development. I like very much. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Um, at my school, I, I am also the president of English club, yeah. And in my experience, in my knowledge, I see that, yeah, I, um, I, I see that uh, in general, in general, education for sustainable development is to equip people with knowledge and uh, the skill uh, in sustainable development, making them uh, more competent and confident, while at the same time is creating their opportunity for leading healthy and productive lifestyle in harmony with the nature and with the concern for social value, gender equality, and cultural diversity. In specific, First one, um, education for sustainable development is an education that aims to help people to develop attitude, skill, and knowledge to make informed decisions for the benefits themselves and others. And now and in the future, and to open uh, their uh, decision. And Education for sustainable development is hoped to meet the needs of the present without uh, com uh, compromising though for the future generation. And it's a vision for uh, development that uh, encompasses population, animal and plant species, ecosystem, natural resources, that integrate concerns of a fight against poverty, gender, equality, and human animal rights are uh, observed. And second, uh, teaching and learning thus provide. Uh, and um, uh, for the first, yeah, okay, let me uh, wait. Uh, for the first uh, idea, I will show you on the screen uh, the picture of the student and teacher take, uh, participating in military exercise at my school two days ago. I think it's one way, one way to, um, to help the student to uh, raise a West lead up um, to protect uh, the country and uh, to have positive attitude while teaching and learning for teacher and student. And second, 
And the second is teaching, um, teaching and learning that provide an understanding or interaction of social, uh, economic, and environmental issues in order to equip people to live sustainably. Um, to be specific, I will show you on evidence. Uh, it is my, the project of my, my student at school. Some student um, join the um, uh, environmental uh, project to, to collect the uh, plastic bed or bottle to each trend with the uh, green trees. I think it's that's a very important project to help the student to um, know how to protect the environment. It's very uh, important and necessary to in your education, in teaching and learning at school. And next one, next one, uh, a process of integrating the principle and practices of sustainable development into own aspect of education and learning. Yeah, I think it's very important for students to uh, while learning and practicing yeah, in school and up, uh, outside school. Here on my screen, uh, the picture of my student, um, they, are at, um, they were participating in um, sharing some product, product, uh, product of uh, um, themselves to, um, to make profit. Yeah, to have the school expenses. Yeah, it's very important, right? And this one, I think uh, education, education uh, that encourage changes, changes uh, in knowledge, skill, and value, and attitude to enable more sustainable and just society for all. Yes. And this one, and this one, um, education for sustainable development involve a vision of education that seeks to empower people to assume responsibilities for creating sustainable future. Uh, to become a learn learning process or uh, approach to teaching based on idea and principle that underlie. Um, and it's also a uh, concern with the all level style of learning to provide quality education to foster sustainable human development. And this one, I mean here, I mean here, education fear concerned with the preparation for the student system to face the global changes, challenges, and promotion of sustainable future. The field of education for sustainable uh, development is co contested one, and practice are uh, then takes are uh, on different and opposing approaches. It's very important, right? And this one, I mean, uh, an approach to education that focuses on uh, bringing global ch challenges, uh, climate trends, uh, and economic um, inequality and bio bio um, biodiversity decline into teaching and learning at school. It requires approaches and far reaching changes to the curriculum at any uh, countries. And uh, last but not it, Last but not it. Um, yeah, a, a, a lifelong uh, holistic and transformational learning process that empower learner with the knowledge, skill, value, and attitude to take informed decision and make responsible action for environmental uh, integrity, economic uh, viability, and thus society. And I think that here on screen, I show you the picture of a student practicing cooking beef ludo. I mean, to show you the evidence of student uh, to have, um, to do some uh, economic activity at school, to raise a wealth and to uh, have positive attitude while learning at school. 
I think it's very important for education for students. That's all my uh, for my sharing about this topic. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, our speaker uh, from Vietnam, uh, Miss uh, uh, My uh, Li Thi Mai An from uh, Vietnam. Um, if I can pick up from what she's trying to tell us, her keyword for today is uh, we are educating. Uh, we are uh, what do you call uh, education for sustainability development. Uh, without uh, compromising the welfare of future generations. In other words, we have to teach them uh, to ensure that we don't spoil, you know, contempt, uh, 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 what you call, uh, finish up all the animals in the sea, uh, contaminate or, you know, uh, um, uh, do something that ex um, increase the green gas house emission. So very much along the lines of the UN 17 SDGs. That's right. Am I right, uh, Ms. Mayan? Yeah. So we need to uh, teach them, educate the education should be geared towards the 17 UN SDG now. Thank you again. Uh, yeah, thank you. From yes. yeah. I also want to say to thanks to Great May, and we are really honored that she's with us for the first time. Uh, she's welcome. what? Welcome. Welcome. Oh, yeah. okay. So great. <laughs> yes, we say to all. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Okay. Okay, now from Vietnam, let's now move into another country. Uh, let's move to Europe now. We will move to the United Kingdom. And now I'd like to call upon Professor Ambassador Dr. Augusta Elizabeth Coroma. Okay, she's an entrepreneur, CEO, Sickle Cell Intervention and ASCCA4ER. Whatever that is, uh, we'll have to wait for him to tell to tell me you know, to tell what it is. Uh, Ambassador Augustine Augusta Elizabeth. Ma'am, uh, the floor is all yours, please. Good morning from the UK. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes Professor. Um, you know, that was really good of you there. Um, it's wonderful to be here on this platform. Um, the ask for ASCI is Africa Sickle Cell Center for Education and Research. Um, I see, okay, all right. It is, so it's called ask for her. Um, all right. A wonderful morning to you all. It's so great um, to be part of um, this organizations, and um, it's wonderful to share um, education for sustainable development um, here from the UK. Um, we all know that um, education and prosperity go hand in hand, and when everyone has access to quality education, nations can develop. The value of learning is enriched in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, UN SDG 4, which outlines the need for fair and inclusive education. Education underpins all sustainable development activities in some form. That's why the United Nations um, covered in many of the government's projects, including those on women, empowerment, gender, equality, entrepreneurship, healthcare, justice, diversity, inclusion. All of these includes aspects of teaching and development. Another key target is eliminating disparities in education and making sure people of all genders, abilities, ethnicities and other vulnerable people have access to learning opportunities. Education for sustainable development means including key sustainable development issues into teaching learning. For example, climate change, disaster risk reduction and all that. And UK is one of uh, um, the country that is very passionate about climate change. The United Kingdom is um, delivering a better, safe, greener and world future generation and education is one of our key weapons in the fight against climate change. The entrepreneur can do spirits of this country makes me confident that we win this fight. It shouldn't it should have come as a surprise to anyone that young people are already very committed to a more sustainable planet. We should be proud of this. And the UK government encourages passion 
so that we can be an agent of change in protecting our planet. The new natural GCSEs will offer young children a chance to develop a deeper knowledge and understanding of this amazing planet, its environment, and how we can come together to conserve it. The measures are expected to build on the government pledge for every new schools delivered under the department school rebuilding programs to be cleaner, greener, net zero in operation. The rollers of ultra lower carbon education buildings will also be accelerated and by 2025, at least four schools and one college will have, have been built via the, um, the Gen Zero platform that the department demonstrated at the COP 2016, 20, um, 26. The strategy also details the development of additional measures first announced at the COP 2016. This includes the National Education Park that we educate children, young people to get more involved in the natural world. It will help increase biodiversity in the grounds of their nursery, school, college, by them asking, um, taking small steps, such as installing um, bird feeders, um, bug hotels, teachers will be provided with free high quality climate education resources as part of Nature Park Hub. Children and young people will also be able to undertake a new climate award in recognition for their work to improve their environment with a prestigious national award ceremony held every year. The Climate Leader Award will help children and young people leaders, award will help them in their skills, the biodiversity, sustainability, and celebrate and recognize um, um, their work in developing their skills and knowledge. Department of Health has an important role to play in all aspects of sustainability, but the area in which we have the most work to do is reducing our environmental footprint, particularly in the drive to um, achieve net zero. While these policies set out here are focused on environmental um, aspects of sustainability, this is done with consideration of how those policies will interact with the social and economic aspects of sustainability. The UK government and the developed government, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales are committed to climate action, and we will work together in our international action. The target and strategic aim set out relate to England. It brings out um, short, medium, and long-term action that will help enable to make progress towards achieving our four strategic aims and overreaching vision. It is a strategy to 2030. Um, the strategy um, informs um, in the UK, these are the, le um, the learning tools that they use, critical reflection, including the more traditional lecture, but also newer approaches such as reflective accounts, learning journals and discussion groups, systematic thinking and analysis, the use of world um, case studies, critical incident, project-based learning, stimulus activities, and the use of the campus as a learning resource. The higher education sector, has a pivotal role and responsibility in protecting the planet through their research, their estates, their ways of working, and their position in global network. However, the behavior of these graduates have they live, learn, and work throughout their lifetime will have a persistent impact on the environment and social challenges the world is facing. The competencies. The skills, the attributes, and values the graduates develop through the studies can, can help them contribute to a more sustainable future, transforming their thinking so that they have a possible impact throughout their life. Participatory learning with emphasis on group peer learning, developing dialogue, experimental, 
learning, action, research, learning to act, developing case studies, local community groups, and businesses, thinking creativity for future scenarios by using role play, real world inquiry, future visionary, uh, problem-based learning, providing space for emergency, collaboration learning, very important, including um, contributions from guest speakers, work-based learning, um, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary working, and collaborating learning and co-inquiry. Sustainable education is a mantle that everyone should embrace. And I hope our future generation to come will be embedded in this strategy. Thank you ever so much for listening to me. Greetings from the UK. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ambassador Dr. Augusta Elizabeth Koroma. If I can summarize what you're trying to tell us is that uh, the UK is uh, like any other nation is, is paying attention to education as with regards to sustainability development, but your focus is more on climate change. Climate right? change, so yes. So the, the, the intervention, they're all the same. The pedagogy is almost similar from the other speakers we heard earlier on, but climate change is the key focus, right? Thank you again. Yes, the key. Uh, yes, Professor it is the Ambassador key. Yes. Elizabeth Koromaya from yes. the UK. We now yeah. let's move uh, further mm -hmm. down south a bit. Thank you. We will now go to Sri Lanka. Our next speaker is Mr. Ravin Tiran Vivekanan Tarasa. He's a lecturer in the Faculty of Education at the Open University of Sri Lanka, and he's an international speaker. Sir, my friend from Sri Lanka, all yours. Yes. Ten minutes. Oh, okay, sir. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for for inviting me this uh, international uh, conference. So I can see the international webinar. So on the topic uh, education for sustainable development, I have to thank all organizing committees and moderators, all the participants and the speakers. So thank you very very much once again. Oh, it's a very nice part of the country. So I have to say good morning and good evening, even to good afternoon from uh, Sri Lanka. So. Uh, let me uh, let me to share my uh, presentation uh, to talk about that uh, today's theme the sustainable development and education so give me one minute Our great Viveka Marta, he's a wonderful yeah. researcher. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, madam. So give me a few minutes to share my presentation. So I think it's okay now. Yeah, it's opening. Yeah, it's coming. All right. So, okay, uh, thank you for the patience. Uh, so that uh, based on the theme of the today's webinar, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, on the topic. Uh, it's coming. Yeah, okay. So you know about me, so I'm from Sri Lanka. I don't need to tell about that. But so that today my topic is uh, the resilience in education for the sustainable development. So here are the outlines. The presentation will go with uh, understanding the concept of resilience and uh, what does it mean by resilience in the education. Furthermore, what is sustainable development? And finally, I will conclude my presentation with a point how resilience in education helps for uh, sustainable development. So when I tell, when I talk about that the time that we are living, you know, we are living in the conceptual age. So we have moved from the information age from the 20th century to 20th century. So, so the time that, that we are living the conceptual age uh, for the development of conceptualization or conceptual ideas, education is very important. Through good education, we can make the world with good sustainable uh, development. So even more after the conceptual age, you know that country will face uh, another age of uh, value, valuable, value era. Value era will be the another age uh, with the development of uh, 
sustainable development. You know that, again, I'm telling that the industry, you know, that we are living in the 4.0, how this industry 4.0 is helping for the sustainable development through education. You know, we can make all the changes through education. As uh, Nelson Mandela mentioned that education is the only weapon by which we can uh, change anything. Uh, according to him also, the industry 4.0, uh, the time that we are living will be very fruitful for the development of education through sustainable development. So what is resilience? You know, resilience, or we can call it a resiliency, is our ability to adapt or bounce back when things don't go as we planned. Or So how we can face the challenges, how we can accommodate the setbacks uh, when we have a difficult time, you know, when we were under COVID-19 pandemic or even the economic crisis, various part of the country, we had that time of resilience, how we uh, came back from that situation, how, what are the ideas or solutions that we used for that condition, which are all are uh, connected with the concept of resilience. According to the research of leading psychologist, uh, Susman Khobasa, there are three elements that are very essential for the resilience. Those three elements are challenges, or you can, we can say challenge or commitment or personal. The three major elements of this resilience are built up in the concept of education. That's another I'm going to discuss with you. Before that, how resilience is connected or how resilience is uh, helping to the other, uh, the other areas of development or uh, maybe to make us uh, to make us to be built up. So resilience can uh, nurture our positive view of ourselves, or maybe it is meant again. So it, it can help making connection and moving toward our goals and accept the changes is a part of life. Accepting the changes. The five resilience uh, is helpful or is very important to take a decisive action or action to take to uh, good and effective action. So what is resilience in education? That's my another point. So, you know, what is resilience in education? When we have difficult times or changes in the world that we have that experience before one or two years, uh, many of the incidents or events or natural disasters, those are the ex experiences that we had uh, to uh, in our life or uh, that affected almost in the field of education also. At the time, how we are coming back from the situation, what are the strategies that we are using to get back from the situation, which are all which all are connected with the concept of resilience in education. That is it's simply, if I say, positive mindset to come back from the challenges. That is that is the concept of resilience in education. How the resilient educator? You you can see this picture. How it is connected with the concept, uh, the education and the resilience. How resilient help for the. Uh, for the better education, or we can say the effective education, and through that, how we can make the sustainable development in the world. So a resilience can connect it with the various aspects, you know, uh, enjoying changes, uh, deeply commit and deep deep commitment, we can say deep commitment, flexible locus of control, and uh, controlling the events, uh, and positive relationship, finally, the spiritual or moral support. These are the aspects of uh, resilience when it connects with the education and through that turns up we can make this world uh, with good sustainability uh, based on the theme of uh, 2030 sustainable development. I move to my uh, next concept sustainable development. Sustainable development is the three concepts is connected with uh, environmental and social and economical aspects and which are very helpful for the development of the country, which can be done by a better education or resilience in education. That's my uh, important point of this present day. So need for the sustainable development. Why do we need sustainable development? There are three major things for the uh, need of sustainable development, over exploitation of natural resources and climate change and the security of the resource. These are the three major and essential needs for the sustainable development. We can make and we can protect these three uh, three features through uh, better education and through making resiliency in education. Right. 
finally i i want to talk about uh, i want to just tell about the how resilience in education helps for sustainable development so we know uh, through resilience in education sustainable development can be developed or can be improved through the quality of human life that's one point so if i go to the second the depletion of natural resources minimizing the depletion of natural resources this is that and it uh, teaches to respect care for all of the all of the life forms we can make a good life forms finally uh, and the next point checking the pollution level finally making arrangements so that the future generation are able to meet their own demands these are the ways that we can make a good or uh, effective sustainable development uh, with the concept of resilience in education so these are the points that i wanted to uh, share with you all and discuss with you all so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you sir and thank, thank you everyone th thank thank you sir uh, yeah. it looks to me that your presentation is more like a phd uh, dissertation your theoretical <laughs> framework yeah it was great <laughs> dr Kar yeah. professor karudin yeah. amazing yeah. presentation and speech yeah yeah, right? yeah he was i like the part when he's using resilience you know uh, as his theoretical framework and he was touching on resilience uh, in education <laughs> and then and he was using the you know uh, the framework is more on the views of education from the ir 4.0 and then you talk i like the three c's the challenges the commitment and the, that theoretical framework i like that uh thank you sir for sharing with us thank you uh from uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right huh? okay um from sri lanka let's move a bit up uh, let's go to india now we will now listen to dr anand kumar bhat who is a professor at the GL Bajaj Institute of Management and Research. Uh, Dr. Arvin Kumar, where are you? Are you there? Yes, sir, you are there, sir. So please, let's welcome yeah. uh, Dr. Arvin. Uh, the floor is all yours. Please. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Professor Slit. And uh, uh, first of all, I wish to extend my heartiest congratulations to the organization. Am I audible? Yes, 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 very much. Yeah, so. that, that's great. That's great. So uh, first of all, I wish to extend my heartiest congratulations to the orga esteemed organizers for this uh, fantabulous uh, conference. <laughs> I like that, and, fantabulous. Yeah, why, 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 why I would like to say that because, you know, uh, this is the, they have brought people under one umbrella to share their experiences, their knowledges, because, you know, yes. SDG is well known to the entire world now. But who is doing what? To bring all the people together, having giving yeah. providing them such platforms is really very appreciable uh, from my point of view, and especially when you are just uh, involved in the higher education institutions. So, uh, without wasting my time, I will just try to uh, upload my PPT. It is not that much uh, things because I wish to. Is it visible, sir? No, yet coming. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you can yeah, uh, put a full, full. Uh, so ah, right. here, I, I just wish to uh, share my experience. What uh, uh, from higher education institute we are trying to do uh, to yeah. serve the community and to serve these goals. Maybe what we are doing it might be helpful and in implementing in the other countries also such efforts. As management college, we are the students are here to just develop their uh, own uh, careers. They were very much focused in finance and something like this. So sometimes this kind of goals are much ignored at that level. So here I wish there are two sides of this thing. Uh, two responsibilities of this higher ed education are there. One by themselves in the teaching learning process, how they are going to implement such uh, goals to be achieved. And the second time, uh, second thing is the involvement of the students. As Professor Marius told that only giving knowledge will not help in making a sustainable development goals visible. So you need to involve the stakeholders. You need to make them a participant in the entire process. So uh, by doing this, I'm just trying to share uh, what we are doing, whether we, we are not saying that we are just achieving, but uh, what we have thought on this, we had a brainstorming on that. And after brainstorming, we are implementing such things. It might be helpful for others also. So as a uh, organization itself, we are trying to comply with the S, uh, SDG I Institute, like we have just put uh, solar systems instead of uh, lights and 70%, you will not believe that uh, the greenery is there nowadays in our campus, clean, 
and uh, full of hygiene uh, is there. And at the same time, awareness program should be given, delivered on the regular intervals from this higher education institute. These higher, edu uh, higher edu uh, education institute should ensure direct involvement of the prime stakeholders like students and assign them, make them responsible for the implementation of such uh, programs. What we did as an organization, we developed a sustainability cell in our uh, college and uh, made students responsible for just trying to attain all the other activities which can be conducted, which can be conducted through a sustainability cell in focus of these 17 SDG. We have included as a, a non-credit course in our curriculum also, this SDG goals and sustainability development programs. We tried as a, a organization not to use much uh, uh, printing things, try to use digital platforms to ensure uh, sustainable development goals. At the same time, we just had a collaboration with NGO just to reach rural areas, to implement a skill development program to support them to develop their skills and livelihood. And also we have attached with the government institution for the uh, responsible for the rural areas. We try as a, a teacher, professor and a student collaboratively, we are just trying to reach. We adopted around five villages around our uh, two kilometers of area of our uh, college and where the students can regularly visit, give them uh, their teaching learning process to the underprivileged students. I will show uh, something. Develop, we have developed a skill development center at our campus. We have signed MOU with the Maharashtra government as a key partner in uh, making Bombo articles and to train other people to have their skills for their livelihood and uh, step towards the sustainable goal. Uh, for awareness things, we are just having, we had just international conferences on purely on sustainability, different stakeholder from ministry to the students, the researchers and others, they came. And those who set an examples like Bath Heavy Electricals Limited, their CEO came and just, they told to the student what they did in trying to achieve the SDG in their uh, organization. We had a uh, digital posters making competition for the uh, purpose of awareness. Actions, we already told you. So considering all the 17 goals, what we made, what we did, we made 17 groups among the students, senior, junior, first year, second year, and each goal given to them and made them responsible to conduct at least two activities practically, as well as for just generating the awareness among the general public what we are doing and how we can maintain more sustainable goals. So we are having under sustainability cell, we are having around 17 teams where you can see uh, there is a participation by volunteer things. And uh, we have taken care of the uh, gender equality also there in the each and every group, made them responsible. So what they are doing, the students are proposing activities and implementing it. And as a higher institution management, we are supporting uh, their activities, maybe uh, with the financial things, we uh, just keep providing them place, space, whatever is required to conduct such things, we are just giving our platform in order to motivate them. And each and every goal team is awarded, recognized on the social media networks just to motivate them. So uh, you can see some of the pictures we are just going, the students are going to the rural areas, they are just going to teach the uh, uh, children, those who are uh, underprivileged and not getting educations. Even a small kid with me, you can see in the picture, and he just came to me and just nagging my uh, pen. Said, Sir, I want to uh, read. I want to learn. I want to be educated. So uh, the above poster also created uh, uh, at our college only, sustainable development education for all is a, one of the goal. The students on the weekly basis are going to the remote area trying to give whatever expertise they are having. On the Saturdays, we are bringing those people to our campus where computer labs are free, so they will have access to their uh, skill development or we can develop some kind of interest into it. Newspapers and productivity, we celebrate the productivity day uh, with the government authorities here and the posters making, you can see uh, things on my uh, slides. And 
normally leadership conclave what should be there for the leadership skill development so we are focusing and working on it uh, i don't know how much it is but we are just uh, uh, putting our efforts including students in such activities making them responsible to implement it so uh, in this way we are just trying as a higher education institute management we are trying to uh, support implement these goals uh, in our campus so uh, thank you very much from my side this is the only thing i wish to share uh, with you guys and this is fantastic thank you thank you thank you prof arvin but for sharing with us uh, what you call uh, the, your role you know as as, as an institution of high learning how um, your um, college uh, is uh, operationalizing education uh, when you want to to educate to teach people uh, um, uh, sustainability development but you're not just you're just talking about it you know not just the philosophy but you're actually doing it from the photos that you have shared with us excellent we have uh, taken the wonderful. baby steps and the such platform yeah, yes, that's yes. why i was just giving uh, my thankfulness to this forum yes, because yes. such baby steps what we are doing may be motivating other institutes maybe it is not a profession yeah. like dr you, mbbs you, college so you I really just, you just the organizers oh. and i requested to pradeepta sir that i wish <laughs> to uh, be a speaker in your this esteemed things you see a yeah. baby step what we are doing yesterday also uh, i was very happy when when uh, tanya uh, was saying that i am just uh -huh. doing bsc online things but we are learning more from here they learn from here and they started implementing at their places yes 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 so thank you pravin doing maybe it's a poster yeah. competition Thank you for sharing with us. Thank wonderful, you. I hope, yeah, I hope other patients Arine, watching wonderful. us uh, can can you know pick up from the example that you've shared with us. All right. Thank you, Prof. Arvind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very yeah. So Prof. from Arine. India, let's yeah from India, let's move again to a new by new by country. We will now move to the United Arab uh, Emirates. I'd like to call upon Miss Hanen Dahri. She's a teacher of Al Majd School. Uh, UAE. She's an international speaker, and she's also ambassador of many global platforms. Uh, Miss Hanen, are you there? Oh yes, yes you are. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Good afternoon. Salam alaikum. Oh, Good morning. Oh, alaikum salam. All Good yours, day, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here among these, um, you know, huge, uh, let's say, giants. Uh, speakers and scholars in this world. Uh, so I'm really uh, very honored to be with you. I would like first to thank you, sir, for uh, having me today. Thank you, Dr. Inga, and thank you to uh, Dr. to Professor Pradpita for this um, invitation. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you all and congratulations to all uh, of you. Um, what has been already introduced yesterday and today is amazing. We are learning a lot. From, from this, and it's um, a great opportunity for us to learn from each other and to grow together, because this is what we need in uh, today's world. Um, we know opportunities are not the same in every country. So uh, with this platform, when, with initiatives such as these, uh, we learn a lot and we grow uh, together. Okay, so I would like to please share my uh, presentation. I'm not very familiar with um, Zoom because I usually use Teams. So okay. I would like, okay, yes. Uh, okay, I have here share screen. Okay, here's my um, presentation. Please confirm when you can see it. Yes. Okay, it's there. Okay, perfect. So now, all right, I will minimize this. Okay, so this is my presentation. Um, um, I prepared this to quickly uh, give or share some um, of what is happening in the UAE and other Arab countries, just briefly in other Arab countries, including my home country, Tunisia. I work in the UAE, so that is why uh, perhaps the focus is a bit more on the UAE, but I will share some of what is already happening. Uh, and towards the end of the presentation, I would like to um, suggest it's not new already. It's been said uh, in this conference yesterday and today, uh, some of the solutions or some of the ways that we can promote more um, education for sustainable uh, development. So um, 
first some of those uh, some uh, perhaps of our uh, audience may not even uh, know what is education for sustainable development because uh, some people will speak automatically or directly about the sustainable uh, the UN sustainable goals um, but I think it's just beyond that it's not just about teaching them it's about real life implementation uh, it's how we can use our schools and universities, our media, uh, every um, available center, every available, um, let's say, society, institution to promote uh, sustainable development, uh, living, uh, sustainable life in order to keep uh, the one and only planet that we all uh, share. So it is an approach to education that promotes learning about sustainability and its related issues. Uh, of course, how we can do this, we can never uh, educate people of sustainable development if we do not empower them as individuals, if we do not empower our uh, learners to, uh, of course, um, learn and grow, uh, of course, and know more about these uh, programs. So in the UAE and in the Arab country, uh, it is an important aspect, the uh, education for sustainable uh, development. Um, it is promoted. However, you know, in some countries, they have the possibilities, uh, the economical, let's say, um, power or wealth that can support those programs and in other countries, it is not the same, unfortunately, but we are, are uh, all, of course, uh, learning. The United Nations um, is supporting those programs uh, as well. Uh, other countries such as the United States and Canada, for example, in my home country, uh, in Jordan, uh, in Egypt, they are also um, empowering or they are also helping uh, in promoting uh, education for sustainable development. So um, we will see some some examples of that. Okay, so in some countries, um, they have there are countries that develop the policies and strategies for promoting the education for sustainable development. For example, in the UAE, they have a national strategies for higher education. They have um, a national strategy or a vision uh, for the uh, zero waste, for example. They have a strategy for uh, the nuclear uh, energy, uh, etc. So uh, they include in the UAE, this has been included in the system, in the government, uh, in their institutions, and they were able to, um, let's say, to um, ensure that these plans are put into action they have teams working on that. They have plans, they have visions, they track uh, what is happening. And they also uh, work on next steps every time something uh, or a goal has been achieved, for example. So I think what is happening in the UAE is a great model that all the Arab countries should really follow because um, for every, there is of course the national committee, uh, committee for the, uh, for promoting the UN SDG goals. Uh, of course, the UAE, they adopted the United Nations SDG goals, the 17 uh, ones of them, and they have created their own plans in order to meet uh, those goals and also to support the world uh, with uh, uh, those goals. So I think this is uh, already great. In Saudi Arabia, for example, they have a national uh, strategy as well for sustainable development, uh, which includes an emphasis on education for sustainable development. Um, in some other countries, uh, you see in their institutional uh, institutions, they have included, um, you know, the uh, the SDGs or the ESD, the Education for Sustainable Development, uh, for example, in Qatar, and here the example of the Qatar Green uh, Building Council, which pro promotes sustainable building practices. Uh, in Egypt, for example, they have the Environmental Education and Awareness Unit, which they, uh, of course, um, work with the government, with other institutions, non-governmental institutions on educational uh, programs that promote sustainability and that promote, uh, you know, uh, the environment uh, as a whole. So there are different um, other examples. Uh, shifting to the, to the education uh, sector, 
Uh, most of the Arab countries, they have integrated sustainability into their national curricula, uh, but, you know, it's, it's evident in some countries and it's not uh, very uh, strong if you want in other countries. It depends, as we said, uh, on the, um, the ability of those countries to provide uh, the right tools and programs that support, uh, you know, those curricula. So some of them, they just indirectly embed those practices in their curriculum in schools, for example, while others they promote and they provide programs, national and international programs that support the uh, ESD within the curriculum. For example, here in the UAE, um, for example, I, I, I forgot here to include a picture of my own school. So when you walk in the corridor of my uh, new school, I joined uh, really recently, Al Majd School, you would see a whole uh, a huge mural um, with the, the 17 SDGs in there. And um, there was a day where I took my students and we sit there, we discussed, and every one of them uh, decided which goal is actually the most urgent one, the one, the most uh, from her, of course, from my students' point of view, which one we should really start working on right now. And surprisingly, every one of them chose a different one, which means or which shows the immer how urgent that is for all of us to work on those goals. It's not randomly that they are all put there uh, and you know uh, supported by the by the globe. So. Um, for example, uh, here in the uh, other examples, there are some initiatives, but they are not really that, you know, um, we can say powerful because of course they serve the goal that they've been created for, but we need more of this. So for example, um, a great practice in the UAE schools is the Sustainability Week, where, uh, which is an annual event held in Dubai and it promotes sustainable development. They have also um, an initiative that will be, will, uh, I will see, uh, I will show later in, uh, in one of the slides, which is called the uh, sustainable schools. That's not just in Dubai, it's in Abu Dhabi as well, which is the capital of the UAE. And um, this uh, initiative actually um, discusses and addresses uh, many issues regarding the environment, especially, for example, um, endangered species protection and um, the, you know, uh, green, thinking green and, um, you know, uh, different other uh, examples that can help uh, our, um, of course, our environment. In, for example, Morocco, they have a program that is called the Youth Climate Leaders. Uh, in, for example, in Egypt, they have the Green Campus Initiative. And in Lebanon, uh, the Lebanese Association for Energy Saving and for Environment, ALMI, they provide training programs, uh, of course, including or in different topics such as renewable energy, uh, et cetera, waste management to uh, not just students to as well, to teachers and other, uh, of course, individuals from different um, associations. So this, I think, these initiatives will definitely help uh, alleviate the, uh, the issue of uh, um, what is happening, especially climate change, especially, you know, with the, with the recent natural disasters that have happened. I think it's more urgent than before that we have to look at these things and start doing some real action. Um, for education precisely here, and we know that uh, the UAE, they think that education is the key for actually for achieving any uh, sustainable development and they support the uh, SDGs. Uh, so for example, they created the National Strategy for Higher Education in 2030, and it includes definitely a focus on sustainability. Uh, and also they focus a lot recently on uh, quality of life and well-being, on innovation, etc. And as you, uh, gents and uh, ladies and gents, uh, agree with me, I think that all these things work together because we cannot try to solve environmental issues while uh, we have people who are struggling from, for example, poverty or while people are stressed at work, they're not really um, enjoying their life and they do not have a quality of life and well-being. We cannot address some issues and we leave the others. They all work together. So that is what is the UAE is doing. They are working on different 
um, perspectives in order to meet uh, these goals. Uh, for example, here in uh, the UAE, they have the Masdar city, which is uh, a zero carbon city, the first of, it, of its kind that's been, um, you know, in the world like it's, uh, it was here years ago. And there is an institute there, the Master Institute of Science and Technology, uh, which is a research-based uh, or focused university in Abu Dhabi. They are dedicated to uh, discuss, to work on, to promote sustainable development and renewable energy uh, education. Uh, here is the initiative I told you about earlier, which targets um, primary and secondary schools in the UAE. And I think, um, you know, starting from schools uh, is the key because when you educate learners, when you educate them at a very young age to uh, value the, uh, the globe, to value our environment, that will help a lot, uh, you know, uh, for the future. This is how sustainability is already uh, being built from a very uh, young age. Um, they have other initiatives. They work with different institutions, like, for example, the National Aquarium of Abu Dhabi, like, for example, uh, the Dubai Municipality uh, Society, the, the Wildlife Society of the Emirates. All these, they work together. They come to schools. They educate children about endangered species. They invite them uh, to field trips, etc., to teach them about, um, you know, uh, endangered species, about climate action and how it is affecting, uh, you know, uh, our lives. Um, if we move to Tunisia, the effort is a bit different, let's say, or the um, the achievement perhaps is less, you know, because, you know, uh, Tunisia, we have been, uh, you know, uh, recently uh, as a country going through different changes, but that doesn't stop us from working to uh, promote sustainability in our schools. So we have um, sustainability, it is within the curriculum uh, in the uh, in Tunisia. Some examples are, um, and of course, we we have received a lot of support from Canada, for example, from Europe, etc., to implement environmental initiatives. And actually, there are some. Um, characters that has been known forever for me since I was a child that this represents, for example, uh, environment protection. Uh, there was this character that called Labib and he, um, we have known him as, um, you know, it's a, it's a little uh, fennel or fox or something like that. And it represents cleanliness, it represents um, protecting the environment, etc. We all grew up uh, with that, um, you know, uh, character in every uh, park in Tunisia, in every street, etc. Uh, in Tunisia, in small cities, we have uh, environment avenue in every city, for example, to uh, raise the awareness of people of the importance of, uh, you know, keeping our environments clean, of teaching our children how to, uh, for example, to manage waste, how to uh, solve the problems, uh, environmental problems, for example, using um, recycling, using, uh, reusing, etc. So uh, the effort has been there. Uh, but of course, um, as a third world country, we need uh, a lot. Uh, we have achieved a lot, but we are still working to, of course, reach better uh, outcomes, inshallah. Uh, it's there in secondary education. Uh, in higher education, for example, we have different uh, universities or colleges that promote or that offer programs on your renewable energy, on sustainable energy, for example. And um, of course, uh, they offer environmental management degrees, et cetera, to encourage young people to uh, study uh, these things instead of, uh, you know, um, or in order to help with uh, the future, uh, with saving the future. And as well, uh, as we all know, of course, this will provide also uh, better opportunities for individuals to work and uh, to have a better quality of life. Um, moving to uh, the environmental problems, how can we as uh, educators, as uh, educational institutions, how can they help? How can we all help? So I think here uh, we should have environmental studies courses uh, implemented in every curriculum about 
climate change, pollution, conservation. Uh, schools should explore ways to generate renewable energy on campus, for example, and provide real life opportunities for learners to uh, see how, for example, solar, solar panels work or wind turbines work, how we can develop uh, projects, for example, based on that. Uh, we should also have community service projects. Uh, of course, the schools can organize those and they, um, of course, use the community as their partners if they cannot do it because we can never do it on our own. Uh, we can also, as uh, countries, I guess, especially the Arab countries, we have a nice climate. Um, we have a good soil quality, etc. So uh, sustainable agriculture should be promoted, and this also should start from schools. They do, they should learn about organic farming. They should learn about um, integrated pest management, etc. And if they, uh, after all, if we do not have uh, ethics and values that focus on this, we will never be able to promote anything or to do or to achieve anything. So this means that uh, we have. To, as individuals, as educators, we have to teach these values to our children, to our students, to our learners, how they should value uh, the uh, environment, how they, they should value human beings, how they should value uh, helping others, etc. They should um, develop a responsible stewardship of the environment and other issues in order to be able to uh, develop, of course, and to grow and to uh, improve. In education as teachers in a very basic level, if we do not have the income, if we do not have the tools, there are many ways that we can start, especially if you are a school uh, in the middle of nowhere, like um, in my country, for example, um, I've seen uh, recently, especially after the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, that some schools, they started, you know, based on their, or using their own, uh, teachers using their own resources. They started teaching students about stream. They are teaching them how to code to solve problems. They are, although um, as a country, we could not provide, you know, like coding programs. We do not have internet in every school, etc. but still teachers are striving to uh, teach those skills to their uh, to their learners. Uh, here in the UAE, alhamdulillah, we have better opportunities. So stream education is uh, in almost every school in the UAE, it is promoted. Uh, so with stream education, teachers can use uh, reading, they can use science, they can use technology, they can use arts, et cetera, to uh, build uh, to teach, uh, you know, about sustainability and sustainable development to their students. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, the last but not least thing here in this uh, presentation, um, Microsoft tools, they have made it uh, really, you know, um, available. They are, they've made it possible for us as teachers, wherever we are, because they provide uh, free tools for teachers, as you all know. So they made it really uh, possible for us to help uh, build this uh, education in our uh, in our classrooms to implement uh, sustainable development to uh, to to um, address sustainable development goals in our classrooms. Uh, students can use uh, OneNote to work together. They can use Teams. They can use Minecraft to code and to build sustainable cities using coding. They can share their views and their ideas using Flip or Flipgrid as it was known before. They can use the different digital resources in order to uh, solve problems. And I guess um, if every teacher is given time and if is given resources and every learner, uh, we will be able to see uh, amazing results if we can trust uh, of course, I, if we as educators trust our students and our governments right. trust us to solve yeah. these issues. I hope, uh, I'm sorry for making yeah. this long. Thank you so yeah, much. Okay. Thank, <laughs> you. Uh, Thank you, Miss, Miss Davi, Thank you for sharing with us the strategy, okay, and the plan from the Arab countries. Very interesting, but very detailed. You have actually overshot your 10 minutes, but I thought it was, you know, it was a good sharing. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Uh, Thank what, you. So you know, what, what, what's actually going on uh, with regard to education and sustainability and development uh, in, in the Arab world. Thank you again.
Uh, let's now uh, move to uh, to one of our youngest speaker tonight um, from India. Uh, she's Ambassador Manat Pankul Arnija, young, our youngest pickup champion and certified uh, TEDx speaker, student DLF Public School, Ghaziabad, and she also, she's also ambassador of many global platforms. Uh, Manat, uh, all yours, yeah? Don't uh, please don't 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 uh, exceed your time. Huh? Ten minutes. <laughs> all right. Not at all. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from the land of diversity, India. Myself, Ambassador Manifankar Nija. I'm IIU Youth Ambassador India and IIU ISDC Public Relations Officer. It's an honor and privilege to be part of International Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. Sustainable development is the development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The relationship between education and sustainable development is not that easy. To understand, it is complex in nature. Many nations' capacity to achieve sustainable development goals and targets depends on the status and level of education. It is the basic requirement which we all have to comprehend. Without this, the set goals and targets would just be a dream. Quality education is fundamental to sustainable development, bringing education as a powerful tool. It can improve the standard of living and quality of life of citizens by generating employment opportunities for the youth, providing safety for women, protecting the environment, providing education to all age groups, reducing dropout rates, etc. In particular, educating girls has proven to be one of the most impactful ways of breaking the cycle of poverty. Education for Sustainable Development is UNESCO's education sector response to the urgent and dramatic challenges the planet faces. The collective activities of human beings have altered the Earth's ecosystem so that a very Survival seems in danger because of changes more difficult to reverse every day. It empowers learners to take informed decisions and responsible actions for environmental integrity, economic viability, and just society for present and future generations. While respecting culture, diversity, development of knowledge, skills, values and behavior required to create a sustainable world. It is important to note that it is not the education about sustainable development, but the education for sustainable development. It is the education that empowers one to claim and respect equality, peace and social justice, build the knowledge and skills to create a sustainable world for everyone. Inculcates the attitude to leave no one behind. Reminds us constantly that we only have one plan. It belongs to all its inhabitants equally and that we have oversubscribed the resources beyond what is rightfully ours. Teaches responsible consumption and production delivers sustainable economic growth, advocates global citizenship, fosters innovation and abundance towards a sustainable world. Education for sustainable development is a key component and the main tool in achieving sustainable development. And thus, over the past two decades, several international conferences, workshops, seminars, and Symposiums have been organized to feature and build up the importance of education for sustainable development. As a result, education and its outreach 
activities such as training and capacity building, communication, public awareness, scientific and applied research, information sharing and access, networking and collaborations, among others, play an important role in achieving SDGs. Apart from behavioral change, it is very important to understand the role of psychological perspective and approach in achieving SDGs. Many education for sustainable development programs aim to improve people's attitude and belief toward nature. Contextual support, social norms, action difficulty, and habitual behavior, among other things, are all eminent that influence the behavior. According to psychological studies, if people's views are to change, education must go beyond that to help them act in ways that are constant with their values. The study had put efforts to show that there are weak links between attitudes and behavior through psychological research, and this shall be taken into consideration. While designing educational programs for sustainable development in schools, in recent times, the focus of education has been shifted to gain and equip the 21st century skills, as it is imperative if one has to improve the quality of education and outcomes and results of learning level at all levels of education. With the current degradation and exploitation of our ecosystem, it has now become extremely necessary to include environmental studies. Environmental education had to be included as a part of school curriculum. It helps by engaging the children from a very young age in sustainable living practices. Therefore, we need a new age curriculum for our children which teaches and inspire them to live in harmony with nature. Apart from an eco-curriculum, we also need better teaching and study practices which enable students to develop their skills to face the world that lies ahead. Thus can say, evidence is unquickle. Education saves lives and transforms life. It is the bedrock of sustainability. That is why we must work together across all development areas to make it a universal right. Thank you. Wow, look at that. Look at the eloquence, uh, what you call um, fluency and uh, the words, the terms that she introduced. I like the part when she mentioned about the degradation of our environment and bedrock. So you see, look, she's the future. She's the one who's going to inherit this planet. Can you imagine if a lot of other young people like her all over the world is listening to her and inspired? And it's our responsibility to ensure that we do not further contaminate this planet Earth. Thank you, Manat, Pankal, Arunija, for that excellent uh, presentation. Uh, wonderful. Let's give, give her another round of uh, clap. Thank you, Prof. Asia. Prof. Arvin is also clapping. Okay, Prof. Uh, right. Okay, let's move on now to another speaker uh, from India, Miss Arnvi Purohit. She's a student of class 10 from Amiti International School, Noida, India. Where is she? Oh, there you are. Uh, uh, yes. All yours, uh, An Anvi. Yeah? Miss Anvi, all yours, please. Thank you. Can you see my PPT? Yes. Okay. So there's an African proverb. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must outrun the fastest lion or it will be killed. Every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the slowest gazelle or it will starve. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you'd better be running. So hello, my name is Anvi Parohit and I study in Amity International School, Noida. I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to speak on such an interesting topic of education on sustainable development. So taking you all back to the African pro proverb, it's a great motivational proverb because it's about saving another day in life and it's very relevant for animals. 
I wanted to use this in human context, where we are also running in order to save another day. But we might be doing something which could ruin our future. So it's a VUCA world we are living in. So people are running around doing things that they think are relevant, but they're oblivious to the aftermath of it. People are making choices without thinking that it would be harmful in the long run for the future generations. We have become too myopic and short-sighted to be able to see the results that are brought to us. We are told fossil fuels are not great source of energy and may be adding to global warming. And someone said that let's move to electric vehicles. Now they say that procuring and creating battery is not so environmentally cleaner either. And it's becoming a matter of debate. So mm. while all this is happening, we know that the world needs to be preserved for good. The air, water, soil need to be protected as we breathe it, drink it, and eat what's grown on this very soil to stay alive. The essence is in the question, how much is too much? And in my sense, with the momentum that we are moving, we are close to too much. So obviously things need to change now. And has the journey begun? Yes, I think that the journey has begun because we're reading about it a lot and we're talking about it here today. So we acknowledge that there's need for improvement, but is the action that we take enough? In the last month, how many of us have said no to the shopkeeper giving us stuff in poly bags and plastic bags? What are people beyond this conference supposed to do? I guess the answer lies in how do we conduct ourselves and how do we need to change? What will bring this change? And is this education enough for us? I don't know all the answers, but I know the problem and I'm ready to act upon it. So I'll be sharing some bits of facts and throwing some numbers before I talk about the topic. So in Canada, there are 8,953 trees per person and comparatively in India, there are only 28 trees per person. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. But I'm certain about the fact that in the matter of sustainability, India will be hit first and Canada will be hit last. We know every living being needs oxygen that we draw from trees. A tree can provide a day's supply of oxygen for up to four people. And we know that a lot of trees are cut down every day. And while you all might be scared, I'll also throw in a number that India has added 200,066 uh, hectares of forest area every year between 2010 and 2020. So let's move on to economic development. And so how much is more, or let's say, how much more is adequate for us? What do we need in our life? Is it the brand or is it the cloth? Well, manufacturing one t-shirt, 2,700 liters of water is used up and that is enough drinking water for one person for 900 days. Every procedure takes up a lot of resources, which will sooner or later become scarce. We all know thousands of people die of dehydration every single day. Back in the day, people had limited clothes, not because they were poor. Even rich people had limited clothes. They were very minimalistic and they valued the resources that they had. Nowadays, people are unaware about what they're wasting and what they're giving up for one single t-shirt. Can we go minimalistic for others that aren't even able to get the basic lively resources they need? All development is not for good. We need to see how we, we can be more prudent in the way that we are living. We need to think about what's causing or what we're using up every single time we take a decision. Remember, less is more. So now what's social inclusion? I think social inclusion is a topic that is currently getting a lot of attention and improving day by day. And social inclusion is all about gender equality, empowering people. It ensures that all members of society have equal access to educational opportunities. It basically strives towards a better, more fair world and everyone being treated like equals. So I believe that if we get guided by a bigger goal of saving the earth, the crisis is enough to bring us together. We have outgrown on the planet because we are human beings, but we can flourish only if we are being human. As a wise man once said, accepting a problem is the first step towards solving it. But as we accept, we also accept that there's much bigger problems than anyone can imagine as this is life-threatening, not for us, but for future generations also. So the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to set quantitative targets in the social, economic, and environmental dimensions of the sustainable development, a framework of common actions for people, planet, and prosperity. The 17 SDGs from a coherent and integrated set of global aspirations that the world is committed to achieve by 2030. 
The one takeaway that I want each of you to take from this address is to just pause before you make a choice and think on it how it will affect the planet. This pause now can help us avoid the silence of mourning later. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and we, Ms. Purohit, that was awesome. You know, you're very quick, but you shared, you know, you were looking at it uh, from a global perspective. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is also a good start uh, for your uh, international speaking. I think after this, uh, you will be speaking again. I when I can imagine that. Well done. Yeah. Uh, and we, we now from uh, uh, India, let's uh, move on to another country. We will now move to Zimbabwe. Uh, I now like to call upon yeah, Dr. Patricia Gonde. Uh, am I right in pronounce? Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing it properly. Uh, nice. Head of Academics, Lucy Tenia, your author, international speaker, ambassador, country director of Zimbabwe for many global forums. All yours, Dr. Patricia. Oh, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much, our moderator. Um, let me start by sharing my, my screen. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, all right. Um, I would like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to us all viewers across the globe. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Global Economic Forum uh, for giving us uh, me this opportunity today to be talking to you uh, concerning educational education for um, for social um, for sustainable development. And when we are talking about education for sustainable development. Uh, we all know that um, in, in our everyday lives, education is the bedrock for all developments uh, to take place. If uh, we want the education for sustainable development uh, to really happen, it means that we need to invest in education. Uh, we need to include uh, uh, education in the school curriculum. And education for sustainable development uh, is very important uh, in that it can transform the world. It depends on what, uh, uh, how we have uh, implemented it. And it is a, a framework which is used uh, to learning sustainability and preserving our planet. And um, it fosters lifelong learning. Um, I will show you the, the, the pictures that I had for my school. That is what I'm going to share with you today. And it also allows our students to acquire uh, knowledge to shape a sustainable future, including all those uh, uh, critical uh, thinking skills. Uh, with, uh, we think about uh, systematic thinking. Uh, there's quite a lot. And then it's... Um, Education for sustainable development transforms lives through quality education as a main driver for development. Uh, this is a, a tall order uh, for governments, especially uh, in terms of uh, providing quality education uh, and to make sure that each and every child is ac access uh, to quality education. And also it enables us to live what we learn and then learn what we live. So um, in our schools, we teach our children to learn to know the theoretical part that we, uh, we teach our children. Uh, we teach them to know certain things in their life. And then to learn, if you are teaching sustainable, they will learn to be like sustainable practices. And then they also learn to do uh, through use of their hands, uh, practical things that they can apply. Then they learn to live together. If you are living in a sustainable uh, uh, community, uh, sometimes there's uh, certain uh, practices that, that you do as a community. And then we teach our children to learn to transform oneself and society. So uh, going quickly to what um, I have here, uh, this is my, uh, my school, uh, Lusitania Primary School. And Lusitania Primary School is a school that is in Zimbabwe and it has offers so many aspects of learning, which include the academic, sporting, and cultural activities. Like I said, that we need to invest in education. Uh, uh, in terms of cultural diversity, 
uh, it's a Portuguese, the only Portuguese, um, it is only the, the only primary school in Zimbabwe that offers Portuguese. So we also celebrate, we teach our children cultural diversity so that whenever they go in any world global, they can fit. So we teach about uh, uh, cultural uh, diversity. And then, uh, we never stopped uh, teaching during the time of COVID because we quickly went on teams and our cho our children all have tablets in their classrooms. Uh, we have smart boards. We started early in 2018. So quality education is what we are talking about. And then looking at uh, Lusitania, um, like uh, some schools have got innovation hub. If you are to teach education for sustainable development, it is the only school in Zimbabwe that is a Microsoft testing testing IC3 li literacy in Zimbabwe. Then uh, besides that, for the past uh, uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, in terms of quality education academically, uh, we produce children who produce 100% pass rate. Uh, in uh, after their exams, they write so many exams at Preserve and Leven Cambridge, they do the ZIMSEC, they do ABRSM music, they do um, uh, practical piano, uh, so many activities that we, we provide in terms of uh, to provide quality education. And then also in the academic and sporting arenas, we are a force to reckon as we provide all the sporting activities that you can think of because we want our children to, to not to be only academically fit, but also in terms of sporting and cultural activities, wash riding or knitting, uh, gardening or skateboarding. There are so many activities that we do. So we are, we are a 21st century and we try by all means to be, um, to fulfill our goals, our mission statements to provide quality education. Then in terms of, um, other things that we provide, uh, like we said, we are innovation hub, our children uh, practice. Uh, you can see that they are being trained, uh, drones, flying airplanes, assembling and putting things apart, uh, robotics, they're involved in robotics. So this is the type of education, the type lifelong education activities. Children can uh, go further even after they finish school, they can continue doing robotics and uh, uh, drones even after they finish their school. Then uh, we teach our children um, also uh, to be innovative. Uh, for example, the girl who is holding um, in a weather instrument, making use of plastic to make some of the weather instruments instead of going to buy, they do it for themselves. Then um, uh, tree planting, I'm going to talk about it later. And then also we're involved in a lot of artwork, uh, the papers that we don't need. Sometimes we use them, reuse them to make pieces of art like the, the dukus, the headgears those children made. Uh, and they were taken by uh, some uh, uh, organization. EU was there, they bought some of the pictures and some ministries. Uh, this is what we teach our children to do. And we are also an innovation hub. As you can see, our children there, these are four-year-olds. They're sitting there, uh, down there. Uh, it's a maze. Uh, so we teach them to be critical thinkers. And then, um, then economically, we know that ESD has got uh, three pillars. Economic uh, is e economical is one, one of them. So we teach our children, uh, for example, the water harvesting. That is, uh, we harvest our own water, which we use at the school. So we are teaching our children, even uh, when they leave school, uh, they have got uh, that knowledge. They have the skills on how to harvest water. And that is our, our dam. Uh, it's full. And then also, um, we make use of clean energy. We are teaching our children. So those are some of the uh, sustainable development goal, I think number seven on uh, in the energy. And then we teach about use of clean energy using solar, uh, solar panels. And then um, we are also serving economical. Then uh, tree planting, they make their own nurseries, they, 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 they plant their own seeds. And then if you look at the bottom picture, that is a, an a ECD child, is a grade three child, being taught life skills. How do we cook? How do we sweep? Those are life skills that we teach our children. 
towards education for sustainable development. That is a cleanup campaign uh, we do uh, each every first Friday of each month. We do cleanup campaign, and then for some in, for some days we also uh, hold what we call entrepreneurship day. Uh, this year is going to be on the 24th of March, where our children uh, come up with the business plan. They make something. Some people are making pencil cases. So with uh, on 24th of March, it will be entrepreneurship uh, day where our children are going to sell. How much are you going to make? Then we also call a bank that comes to the school. When it comes to the school, it opens up some um, uh, bank accounts for our students. So after selling their goods, after selling their ways at the school, they now deposit their money. So we are teaching them. That's one uh, pillar of economical. And then coming to social, uh, we teach our children about social responsibility. And last year, we won a global award on uh, social responsibility, a global UN award in terms of global um, uh, responsibility. Uh, there we hold uh, some, uh, in some days we hold uh, some activities uh, to raise funds for kids. Can our kids can this year was on the 15th of uh, February, whereby children come dressed in orange, they raise money and we, we donate the money to the children's wards in here in Zimbabwe. And then also we also observe the staff, uh, breast cancer awareness. We also uh, have uh, uh, cancer awareness campaigns in the society whereby we go and uh, teach the community about early detection of signs and symptoms of, co of cancer. That's social responsibility. That is education for sustainable development. Then we also have, you can see our children, they're feeding off an animal. We also take care of animals behind our school. We also have a bed pack where our children also made use of plastic to make uh, some, um, some uh, uh, bed uh, containers for the beds to feed. And there you can see we teach our children also to take care of the environment. Uh, besides that, in terms of social responsibility, we donate books to different schools that are in need here in Zimbabwe. That is education for social, um, uh, education for sustainable development. Then um, last year, we also entered a competition uh, on Suchana, whereby our children were uh, taught how to reduce, reuse, and uh, recycle plastic. And they made some uh, pencil cases, they made some flower pots, and they donated them to Kavsipiti uh, Children's Home. Uh, that's social responsibility. Yes, we are teaching them uh, to be responsible. Then uh, besides that, we teach they are very innovative environment, taking care of the environment. If you look at that picture, uh, because of uh, if you don't have enough space, children can make use of uh, these um, plastic containers. Uh, they then they can uh, grow their vegetables there. Then on this picture, you can see that we teach our children uh, on waste management. We know that the yellow bean is for what the green, you can see the little one is a three-year-old ECD. We teach them, like I said, we have cleanup campaigns uh, each and every uh, month, the first uh, Friday of each month. And then uh, that's the cleanup campaign. Sometimes we even bus our children to different places where we see that there's a lot of litter. Then this is a hydroponics project that is done to, to uh, for uh, if you don't have enough space, uh, you can also take, uh, make sure that you can, uh, you can introduce a hydroponics or aquaponics uh, for your schools so that children learn. Even if you do not have any space in your environment, uh, in your, in your, yet you can make use of that and then this one is a borrowed picture i just wanted to show you that we can make use of plastic reducing reusing plastic that one is a it's, it's entertainment area uh, of a school whereby they use the plastic to make the roof and you can see the tears are being used we use uh, recycling uh, reducing reusing uh, in recycling. So those are some of the practices uh, that we do um, here at, uh, at my school that, that I thought that I could share with you that we are practicing. Education 
for sustainable uh, development. You can introduce even clubs, gardening clubs. Our children also uh, produce detergents. I know that here in Zimbabwe, our universities have also have got those innovation hubs, especially during COVID. They were able to make some PPE, which was used by different schools, and they could even employ their own parents to make those. So those are some of the uh, sustainable practices that we use here at uh, Lusitania. Uh, primary yes, school Patricia, in yeah, it you. was wonderful. We like thank the you. listening. Yeah, thank you. Your, yes, thank you for sharing. Example. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So you're now, not only Professor talking about Sarugis. education. Yeah, uh, you know. Sorry. Uh, Nada, want, thank you for sharing uh, the the actual application of the education on sustainable development. Yeah, Patricia uh, from Zimbabwe. Now, uh, can we and uh, Prof Nada? Can we move to uh, Prof Doctor Ambassador Mary? From yeah, South no, Africa. no, no, Professor, we have little changes before Professor Mikran. Uh, it is our pleasure to call Professor Ujwal Audari, oh, okay. the strategic <laughs> advisor from the Daffodil International University, uh, Bangladesh, but he's coming from India. Yesterday he had problems, but today uh, we, we are really honored to have him now. Professor Dr. Miha, you will talk after him because he needs to go. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well Thank you. Uh, it was a very knowledgeable talk and very practical talk by Madam Patricia from Zimbabwe that I was listening to for the last 15 minutes. A lot of good examples. I, I was so inspired because I am um, having an educational trust which runs a school for the children of fishermen and agricultural laborers in Sundarban. Sundarban is a large forest area on the border of India and Bangladesh. And I picked up a lot of ideas from what she was speaking as practical examples of bringing in sustainable or sustainability in the education of schools. But I am personally from higher education. I have been, I am associated with one university here in Bangladesh, was a pro vice chancellor of another in Calcutta, was, earlier was dean of three universities different times in India. So I would speak about higher education. So this time, uh, for the next five, six minutes in a brief manner, I would like to bring this concept of higher education for sustainable development which is often known as HESD. The basic idea here is that if in every university education, and when I'm speaking of higher education, basically they are post-school. So they are basically about colleges and universities. So higher education for sustainable development, it refers to the efforts by universities and other institutions of higher education, actually to promote sustainable development through everything that they do teaching, research, regular operations, in every form of their functions, there must be sustainable development brought in. The aim of HESD to, is, is to equip the students, the learners. I would ra rather call learners because these days, it's not about students in the, in the times of blended learning and, and AI-inspired learning as well, self-learning, so it's about learners. So the aim is to equip the learners with knowledge, skills, and values needed to contribute to sustainable development. So while sustainable development is a known concept, it should not be just a word, just a jargon. So the learners and obviously the mentors, what whom we call the teachers and the professors, the mentors and the learners both should have knowledge, skills, and values to contribute to sustainable development. And it is also to encourage research that generates new knowledge and solutions for bigger sustainable development uh, initiatives. So the UNESCO, we know UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, it has identified HESD as a key priority in achieving sustainable development goals. So if you really have to bring in sustainable development goals, you have to actually practice HESD in colleges and universities. So many universities and higher education institutions around the world, they have actually responded to UNESCO to this call of the UNESCO by integrating sustainability into their curricula in research agenda and in campus operations. 
So HEST encompasses a wide range of topics, including climate change, biodiversity conservation, energy and resource management, social justice, and responsible business practices. So is the university bringing these topics in their curricula? Are they organizing seminars and conferences on these? Are they bringing in their day-to-day -day campus operations? Are these issues or specific items within these issues becoming the agenda for research? These will prove if HESD is being practiced in that university or not. It involves the interdisciplinary approach, hence, because there is just like social justice requires liberal arts approach. Climate change requires job and environmental studies, biodiversity conservation and all that. Energy management is both a science and a management. So like that, it involves interdisciplinary approach that integrate environment, social, economic dimensions of sustainability. Through HESD, higher education institutions can play a crucial role in shaping the attitudes and behaviors of future leaders and decision makers and in contributing to a more sustainable uh, future for all. So what projects can be taken, for example, in the universities to ensure higher education uh, for sustainable development, what we are calling as HESD, some examples. One obviously is curricular integration. You know, the, one of the good things about university life is a university academic council can start their own syllabus, contents, programs, or modify the curricula which is existing. They don't have to depend upon the government for every step. So easily, every academic council of universities can integrate sustainability into their course offerings, ensuring that students are exposed to concepts related to sustainable development across all disciplines. This can include offering courses on topics such as sustainable business practice or renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, uh, environmental policy or social justice. So it does not have to, for example, it does not have to be an agricultural course to have sustainable agriculture as a, as a paper, as a, as a topic. So sustainable agriculture can appear in social science, can appear in economics, can appear in management education as well. In agriculture, it will surely be there. So it is interdisciplinary in that point. Then sustainability research. Universities can encourage and support research projects focused on sustainability, including studies like climate change, biodiversity conservation, renewable energy, and sustainable urban development. The research can help inform policy decisions and guide sustainable development efforts. For example, uh, I'm in Dhaka, uh, on, the, on the outskirts of Dhaka where university is located in a beautiful campus, Daffodil International University. So one of the topics given for research was about trying to find solutions about the traffic problem, which is legendary in Dhaka. So there are more than 40 million people in Dhaka and outskirts of Dhaka, in greater Dhaka, 40 million. And it's highly, you know, traffic jam and all those. So how to find a solution to that? And a, a very powerful report had been brought in, 42, 44, 44 ways of immediate, midterm and long-term solutions to traffic problem was found out and the research findings has been given to the mayor. Now, this is where we are bringing in sustainability in research. We need to do that more and more, not only traffic for every other problem of sustainability. Then campus sustainability. Are we practicing sustainability in our own campus? Universities can implement sustainable practices in their campus, reducing waste, renewable source of energy, promoting sustainable transport, waste to best, utilizing, uh, turning the waste material into, uh, let's say cooking gas or energy sector. This can serve, for example, our campus does not, have, does not allow any vehicle. This is a huge campus, 180 acres. 180 acres would be, would be, would be, would be, I think um, almost two and a half million or more square feet. So this campus does not allow any vehicle uh, through uh, what you call uh, fossil fuel. Only battery operated golf cart can go there. Uh, battery or, uh, you know, uh, what you call non-fossil uh, uh, energy sector can go. So this can serve as a model for sustainable practice and inspire students to incorporate sustainability in their lives. For example, 200 bicycles are kept here for use for those who want. 
and there's no fossil fuel vehicle allowed inside the campus. The community engagement, that's another area that universities can bring in sustainability. Universities can engage with the local communities to promote sustainability. I think we need to do more on that even in our university, um, uh, such as partnerships with local business and organizations focused on sustainability, organizing events and outreach programs focused on sustainable education in the locality. Then student-led initiatives. Now we have, I mean, just yesterday it's over, there was Oitijer Heart. That means a market for traditional and uh, traditional items and heritage items. And from all over the country, there are 64 districts in Bangladesh. The 64 stalls were put up, putting up the traditional materials, all are sustainable related, sustainability related materials uh, for sale, whether this product or service or food or whatever material were for sale, completely led by the students. 64 teams organized it. So. Uh, universities can support student-led initiatives focused on sustainability, such as student-led organizations focused on sustainable development, sustainable agricultural projects, green energy initiatives, and all that. Which SDGs can be served? Now we have been talking about higher education, sustainable development, HESD. Which SDGs can be served through these examples? HESD can, uh, can serve several of the SDGs. And they, that could be goal number four, quality education, HESD is an essential component for quality education as it equips the students with knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. So quality, education quality will be better if sustainability is integrated with it. Goal number seven, affordable and clean energy. Obviously, uh, for example, all our buildings have solar panels. We need to have, and we need to teach our younger generation that you need to move to move from uh, non-renewable source of energy to renewable source of energy. Even at homes, even at homes, you can bring in solar panels on the terrace and part of your energy consumption can be renewable. So goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities by bringing the practices in the community through community engagement and through the students' engagement, we can promote sustainable urban development practices, including sustainable transportation, energy efficient buildings and green spaces. For example, what, which building is a sustainable building and which is not? This knowledge itself is very critical for, uh, in the university level to be propagated. Then goal number 12, responsible consumption and production, food habits, beauty products, which are sustainable, which are not. HESD can uh, help promote sustainable consumption and production practices, including sustainable business practice, waste reduction, resource management, etc. And lastly, goal number 13, climate action. HSD can contribute to efforts to address the climate change by promoting renewable energy source, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, and raising awareness of the impacts of climate change. For example, even a simple thing like, let's say, uh, get caustic with plastic. We had a movement, anti-plastic movement. Get caustic with plastic. Then there is a very strong movement against smoking. The entire campus is anti-smoking. Such a large campus. If someone has to smoke, has to go outside the campus to smoke. And you have to walk almost three lakhs square feet, three lakhs feet. I mean, it's a large uh, campus, 182 acres. You have to go outside the campus to smoke, neither in the hostel nor. I do understand some youngsters may be smoking in the toilet secretly. That may be. But uh, as far as possible, it's, it is attempted to be stopped. So the idea what we have brought uh, through this small uh, six, seven minutes talk is that every university, every college can integrate sustainable practices through course curricula, through um, research agenda, through community engagement, and through student activities, and also on their campus through green campus. Like every visitor on our campus, main important visitor, will plant a tree which will be named after that person. That nameplate will also be given there, and it will be a permanent thing. So that, you know, and that keeps on adding uh, plants and trees to the campus, keeps on adding across the, uh, the uh, on both sides of the road, it will. So after four or five years, it is already 22 years old campus. So many of these have grown into big trees, you know, on, on, on both sides of the road, and uh, which goes throughout the middle of the campus. So through these examples and points, I wanted to bring the concept of higher education, sustainable development, HESD, which has been propagated, promoted strongly by the UNESCO of the United Nations. 
Thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen, from various parts of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Kaudri, Prof. Joel, yeah, for sharing uh, that um, uh, university model. We've listened from, uh, from uh, the non-university early on, the speakers were talking, you know, from primary school, from the normal uh, college, you know, and then uh, towards the last part of our conference today, almost, the, almost towards the end, you have shared with us, you know, the overview of the doable, which you are actually doing right at your university, uh, this model of education, higher education and sustainability development. Thank you, Prof. Ojoa. Okay, um, Prof. Nada, we have come to the, uh, almost at the end, yeah? So now we have, uh, I have great pleasure in inviting, uh, my apologies again, uh, Prof. Dr. Ambassador Merit, and thank you for your patience, you know, and your indulgence. Uh, I now would like to invite uh, you to share with us your views on this topic in this international conference on education for sustainable development. Over all yours, uh, Ambassador Mehrin, please. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I greet wa everyone in the world with peace, peace, with blessings. Um, thank you, Prof, for the warm introduction and no apology needed. This is how it is. We're all here for the, <laughs> the goal and the outcome, so we patience is required. Um, thank you to um, Professor Inga, Professor Nada, and Professor Pradipta for this. And it's lovely to be on this platform to see so many esteemed speakers as well. Um, I'm trying to figure out which part of what I want to say should I say, because a lot of people have said so much already. You know, yeah, yeah. and I think it's, it's amazing because there's so many things we can take from every little person, whether it's in whichever right. school environment, whatever they've been doing. And I love and I congratulate every educator here who has especially shown us what they've been doing. So to be actually seeing that implementation is a bonus for us all. So it's not just talk anymore. There's actual implementation of stuff happening. Um, but there's just two things I would like to talk about very quickly, and so I'm not going to take too much of time. And the first is that concept of education. So I congratulate everyone for what they're doing in the schools with their children. But I want to take that one step further. Education does not have to be restricted to just a classroom base. Education does not have to be restricted only to that school, whether it's primary school, high school, even tertiary education, any university or college. We need to also take the education for sustainable development to our communities, to the elders even. Don't oust them out simply because they're elders and say, well, they're old. So no, every single person out there has got some form of impact that they can give you or wisdom they can share as to how we can accomplish these goals, for example, and how we can actually sustain our development as human beings. And you go and sit with an elder today who might not necessarily have a tertiary qualification and say to them, what is your idea about how to develop a garden? And I promise you the message that you will get from an elder who has not been to understand what soil is incorporated with, how to do what, what this leaf incorporates, nothing. They just know hands-on that they grew up in a farm. This is what they did with the soil. This is what they did with the seed. And they teach you wisdom about why this happens. And that kind of wisdom is what we need to incorporate in today. So we take the sciences and we take the stats and we take the data, but let's also get the wisdom from those that are in the community, in the areas, not necessarily take education only to the schools or take it from the school out there. So we need to have that more holistic point of view about that education sector of sustainable development. And the other thing I want to talk about is our children. Our children really have answers for us about sustainable development that we are probably not even aware of. So for example, take a group of 20 kids, or if you're a teacher, take your kids in your classroom, whatever their grade may be, and you just give them the project of saying to them, I want you to go and find out about these goals. And I want you to come back and here's your project. This is how long I'm giving you. Find one of them. And you come back to present to this class how you think, as a child of today, that goal can be achieved in our community. Ask the children, because seven years from now, because we're in 2023, right? These SDGs are meant to be met by 2030. From 2015 to now, how successful have we been? We've seen so much of op the opposite start to happen. So 
let's give it to them because we're going to want them to start to lead this. We might have the ideas now. We can give them the guidance now. Yes. But give them this project and let them come back with what they think the answers may be. And take their answers and work with that for your community. Because everyone on this platform, we're grateful, is from every part of the globe. But every community in every one of those areas has their own needs, their own deficiencies, their own weaknesses, their own strengths. And only people in that area will be able to actually inculcate what is really sustainable development for that area. And who better than those children who actually play in that mud, who actually want to run on that road, who really want to use the water, who actually see and feel that they're hungry or they feel the poverty. Go to those people and ask them, what do they think about how it can work? And then work with what you're getting. That is the data we need. So we need the stats, we need the science, we need the data, but let's get to ground root level and let's get there and find a holistic idea of how to really understand the sustainable development per area, per person. And the reason I'm passionate about saying that is because um, and this is not to take away everything good that's being done in every other school in the world or university. I have still got, and I will never take a picture of this. Sorry, you're never going to see a photograph of this. But I have still got children going to a school under a tree. I have still got children that are having to walk across the river to get to a school. I have still got children going to school without lunch to eat for the day. You still have this and it's still there. So we have got these crisis situations still happening. So how do we then boost the education level when you still have the poverty line, the hunger line, the unemployment rates, and all of these wrongs on the education level come to a minimum? It's not balancing itself off. We need to find that balance. And as educators, we need to inculcate the balance. So if, for example, your school is excelling, then Take some of your excelling in your school and push it into a school that is not excelling and help to grow each other in that sphere. Because this is the only way we're going to get to achieving sustainable development is if we really work together and understand that each one of us has the contribution, we have the knowledge, we have the know-how. So let's take it a step further, engage with people, might not necessarily have to be a, a somebody that's got a certificate attached to them, but engage with people who can offer you what they think works because those are the people who can work and take this education level of sustainable development also to businesses. Speak to employees and let them also start to implement what is important for sustainability in the area that they're running their businesses from. Are the employees aware of what it is to be developed and sustained? So we need to take it to all these different spheres as well as keeping it within the school scholastic environment. So I'm not going to go any further. I know everyone is tired. And thank you so much for being here today and even staying on to listen to me. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Prof, for the amazing moderation. Thank you to everybody for the platform. And yes, let's just really, really work together um, at ground root level. And let's help each other to grow with this education for sustainable development for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Prof. Dr. Ambassador Marin Mia. Mm. You couldn't have done it any better. You know, the last speaker for the two days conference, you have crystallized everything. You have even provoked some questions and you've gone down to the actual, you know, low, lowest level of uh, detail and things that probably no one has thought about, but you have been wonderful, uh, Prof uh, Professor Mary. Thank you for sharing and crystallizing the whole topic today about uh, education for sustainability development. I have done my job, uh, I hope, yeah, uh, introducing everyone today. And uh, what you call, uh, if there's anything that is not proper on my part, that's totally uh, mine. mine. I, I seek uh, apologies and all the good things are not from me. It's from Al Allah Almighty. Yeah. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Ambassador Merit. And now I now hand over this whole session back to the Taiko, to the big chief, uh, Prof. Nada uh, Radkovic, <laughs> my good professor. All yours, Prof. <laughs> Professor Karudin, you make it amazing, like always. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, our great speakers yesterday, today. Uh, what to say? I think that we don't have nothing that we didn't 
much this two days on this amazing today's conference on education on sustainable development uh really honored uh, that we have with us uh, today yesterday amazing educators i will repeat again iiu is a education institute bringing all educators from all around the globe having courses and organizing training sessions conferences summits and everything in every field yes we have also talk shows we have so many talk shows but uh, we need to have also something like that to have a little uh, too little i can say uh, for rest uh, for rest uh, in the show so this is also good uh, we are trying to give our best uh, global uh, global uh, community for educators 2030 uh, i said uh, yesterday i will repeat today uh, we have uh, already three great events. Uh, we are coming uh, with a new event uh, in the April. So I will announce uh, uh, already this uh, new event. It will be an international conference on multidisciplinary education and research. It will be at 15 April and 16 April at 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. So uh, our great researchers, here is a big opportunity. Uh, you can already apply, send, uh, send uh, your topic, uh, send your research. We are waiting. Uh, I want to thanks to our great Professor Pradip Tabib for him, uh, for doing an amazing job. Uh, our great Sepiu Spandit, uh, he's giving us the uh, IAU and this uh, unique uh, uh, university, unique state. To me, for the research center, uh, I need to say yes. Uh, I want to say thanks to our great Dr. Uh, Snikta uh, for uh, working with us very hard, supporting us here today with us. Uh, uh, our vice chancellor, thank you, Professor Charles. Thank you for being us. Thank you for your support. Uh, our great, uh, uh, my dear sister, great uh, IAU head Europe, Dr. Inga Kachilava. Uh, she is here with us. Even she have a big conference uh, in her country, uh, in her town. So thank you, thank you, my dear sister, for being with us. Uh, what to say? Think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. First of all, thank you all for your efforts. Congratulations, everyone. We had a very amazing conference today. I want to say two words about my opinion. Okay, dear? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Education <laughs> is a right of every person which has great importance and potential. The principles of freedom, democracy, and sustainable development are based on education. There is no mission more important than universal education. It is becoming clear to the majority of the population of our planet that the environment in which modern man lives is not as good as we would like it is to be the air is polluted. Water and food do not always meet the requirements of health and safety. The climate is changing. Natural resources are being developed. Planets and animals are disappearing. Yes, the living environment has changing and continues to change in a not so difficult direction. Therefore, it is not surprising that people have questions because people see that problem, yes? Why and how much has the environment changed? What avoid humanity tomorrow? Can economy and society and environment be framed together? What kind of world do we want 
in the future. How to change the world for the better? How to stop the develop of negative change in nature and society? Yes, developing the concept of education for sustainable development is UNESCO's answers to these questions and exceeding problems. The rule and importance if of society and education in the modern world go beyond the framework of acquiring new knowledge and applying in its practice. Education has always been an effective tool for changing stereotypes of seeking and behavior. So it is not surprising that even today education plays the key role in bringing about the change necessary to achieve sustainable development. Education is the basis of the concept of sustainable development. Universality and the continuity of education, support from the state and society, integration of modern uh, scientific achievement for the development of ecologically sustainable social models. Of, uh, uh, of course, interdisciplinary approach in teaching and positive education between students and teacher and a learning based of experience and uh, creativity also. Yes, thank you all so much for your amazing work. We can do everything together and change the world for the better. I believe that because, you know, I see how you all work today. I see how you all work yesterday. And uh, I see how you all work every day. And I am excited. My great respect to you all. And again, congratulations. Best wishes to all of you. Congratulations all again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you. Great uh, IIU Europe head and Dr. Inga Kartilava. Uh, so my respect to you, dear. And uh, I mean, don't, and thank you so much, Professor Pradipta. Thank you so much. You, you always rock. Thank you. Thank you, dear moderator. My respect to you, Professor. Thank you so much. Of course, I am your team, Mr. Peyosh Pandit, dear Snitka Kada, and all participants and all great speakers today. Congratulations. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I want to once, uh, once to say uh, thanks to, because today uh, and yesterday, uh, we have uh, new amazing personalities, educators here with us. And you see here, great Dr. Hanan from Tunisia, which is working in uh, United Arabian Emirates, our great Professor Arvind, but uh, Professor Perudin didn't get me to come to the, to the world. So I want to say, Professor Arvind, you are doing so great with your students, so many efforts organizing competitions for all the ages proud Thank on you. you really really amazing uh, keep doing a great work uh, dr hanan uh, you are also amazing uh, working great uh, in your country and for the arabian countries uh, professor ambassador dr augusta Greetings to United Kingdom. So this year, who we have, Professor Charles, thank you for being with us the uh, whole time, for supporting us, our great vice chancellor. So uh, we really come to the end. We really come to the end. So uh, thinking, acting, changing, we will keep reflecting, learning, collaborating, enjoying, being nice. Uh, to ourselves and to all of you. Thank you, lovely audience. I know it is Sunday, a beautiful sunshine day in all my countries. 
today and thank you for being with us uh, giving us support uh, learning uh, and sharing the knowledge writing comments with us uh, so till our next event uh, stay safe stay health stay safe and let's continue learning and growing together professor Kerudin, i want a song please oh it's so late it's so late in your country i know no i know yeah not only that because i had you know last whole week five days i had a corporate training from morning to evening so i'm actually all drained out but because of tonight my energy is coming back thank you thank you <laughs> Okay, next time a song. We want a song from Professor. Uh, <laughs> okay, if okay. not a song, you need to play a guitar. Promise. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. All right then. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Professor Pradip. Bye. Goodbye, all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, Professor Dita. <laughs> <laughs>